morning, dear saints. Great to see you again. Monday, August 3rd, in the eighth month of the year already. Thanks for joining us again this morning for daily devotions. We are uh, taking a little bit of a detour here. We're not following the exact day on the daily lectionary. Today, because we have been following St. Paul in this journey, we are going to continue to read through the book of Acts. So we're off a little bit. These are actually the readings from the 1st of August. But until we get through the end of the book of Acts, we're just going to follow St. Paul, and we're going to see how, how our Father, how God our Father, uses him to give such a bold confession to everyone in his path as he, without any fear at all, continues to proclaim Christ crucified. So the readings for today are actually for the 1st of August, but before that, let's get back to our uh, daily devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, the readings for today that we're using, the psalm for today is Psalm 70. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire my hurt. Let them turn back because of their shame who say, Ah, ah, may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great, but I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. What you see again in the psalm will be reflected in the first reading where St. Paul, as he continues to defend this Christian faith, when he talks about those who accuse him, the Jews, he does not attack them. He is reminded that they are his people and he still loves them. Even though they have a, a huge difference of opinion here, Paul continues to love his enemies. Hear the word of the Lord from the book of Acts, the 26th chapter, the first 23 verses. So Agrippa, the king, said to Paul, You have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I consider myself fortunate. That is, before you, King Agrippa, I am going to make my defense today against all of the accusations of the Jews, especially because you are familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, spent from the beginning among my own nation and in Jerusalem, is known by all the Jews. They have known for a long time if they are willing to testify that according to the strictest party of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial because of my hope in the promises made by God to our fathers, to which our twelve tribes hope to attain as they earnestly worship night and day. As for this hope, I am accused by the Jews, O King. Why is it? Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and I did so in Jerusalem. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison after receiving authority from the chief priests, but when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them, and I punished them often in all the synagogues and tried to make them blaspheme and in raging fury against them I persecuted them even to foreign cities. In that, con in that, con excuse me, in that connection I journeyed to Damascus with the authority and the commission of the chief priests. At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven brighter than the sun that shone around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, 
Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, and the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to anoint you as servant and witness to the things in which you have seen me and in those in which I will appear to you, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they might turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they might receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout all of the region of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, performing deeds and keeping with their repentance. For this reason the Jews seized me, in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day I have had the help to this day I have had the help that comes from God, and so I stand here testifying both to small and to great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would come to pass, that the Christ must suffer, that by being the first to rise from the dead he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. This is the word of the Lord. Well, you can hear St. Paul again standing there as he has gone from uh, Festus to Felix and now to the, to the King Agrippa. And what does he do? Well, he does what is so natural to him. He confesses Christ. He didn't tear down his enemies. Did you notice that? When the king gave him opportunity to talk about that, he talked about his past clearly. He was a Pharisee. He was a complete keeper of the law, believing that if they just kept the law of the Old Testament, the Torah, the law of God, then God would give them salvation because they have done it. Now remember, we talk often in the devotions about who's driving the verbs. Well, when we talk about me keeping the law, me gaining salvation by obedience and keeping this perfectly, I'm driving the law. And St. Paul knew after he was converted that that did not work. That he couldn't keep the law, that you and I cannot keep the law. But God in his grace and mercy sends us Jesus who pulls us from our death and he gives us life through his word. And that's exactly what he did to Paul. Paul did not go after his enemies, the Jews that were trying to bring charges against him. Now what you've heard in Paul's past has been that uh, as people have arrested him and they're trying to judge what they should do with him, they have said over and over again, I find no charges worthy of death. But the Jews are convinced that this man has to go. They're fearful about what he's doing. They're fearful because they're not trusting in God to defend his word. They are fearful that Paul will unravel the religious world that they're living in because it is not based on God and his word. Now remember, they also have a plot to kill Paul. And that's why they always want him traveling, so they can find a spot and they can kill him. Knowing that, Paul does not lash out against his enemies. He confesses clearly his past. He confesses clearly that the Jews are trying to kill him. But even more clearly than that, he comes back to this. That the Christ must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light to both the people and the Gentiles. You see, St. Paul comes back to Christ. Christ crucified for you and for me. St. Paul gives us a great model of what it means to live in the body of Christ, to live in the world of Christ, to be baptized into Christ. He loves God with all of his heart and all of his soul and all of his mind, and he loves his enemies. Oftentimes we hear that he loves his neighbors, but he's loving his enemies. He disagrees with them, but he does not tear them down. He continues to point them to the promises of Christ because it is there in the Word of God that we are converted. 
And that's what St. Paul is doing. And for you and I, dear child of God, these these words of St. Paul give us so much hope because you and I and all of us have a past like Paul. We have a history in our past that we're not proud of. And as we look at this, we have the same hope that St. Paul did. That all of that stuff that happened in the past, all of those dumb things we've done, bad decisions we've made, that's all forgiven by Christ. And we are holy and pure as his dear children. And with that hope, knowing that there is nothing in our past, nothing at all that can condemn us, how do we go forward? We go forward joyfully with hope. And when people come around us and they they try to bring up our past or they try to attack us or they try to uh, convince us to do something different than what Christ says, what do we do? Well, we do like St. Paul. We point them again to Christ. We are confident and reminded of our identity and our baptism. We don't get swayed. We don't attack. We love them. We pray for them. We preach God's word to them. And in that, God will continue to lead his church. He will continue to protect you, and he will continue to convert people through the preaching of his word. Today, dear saint, I would pray for you that you Pray for your enemies. Pray for those who disagree with you. Pray for those who have a difference of opinion. Pray for those whom, those people who will not talk to you. Pray that our Lord would forgive them and our Lord would soften their heart so relationships can be restored both between them and you and also between you and your Father and they and their Father in heaven. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Well, our catechetical for review for today takes us again to the Ten Commandments. The third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and His word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. We confess today on this first day of the week. This is another, beginning of the month, another great time to confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, in this earthly life we endure suffering and death before we enter into your eternal glory. Grant us grace at all times to subject ourselves to your holy will and to continue steadfast in the true faith to the end of our lives, that we might know the peace and joy of the blessed hope of the resurrection of the dead and the glory of the world to come. 
Give us strength, dear Father, not to tear down our enemies, but to pray for them, to hear them, and to point them to Christ. We pray, dear Father, that you would restore relationships that are broken and damaged. Hear us, dear Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and ever evil, that my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Well, dear saints, thanks for joining us today. Tune in again tomorrow. We'll continue watching St. Paul and the wonderful things that God does through him and the wonderful things that our Lord does through us as well. Go in his peace.